Chapter 6 Maturity and the Entrepreneurial Perspective Maturity, the third phase of a company's growth, is exemplified by the best businesses in the world. Businesses such as McDonald's, FedEx, and Disney. A mature business knows how it got to be where it is and what it must do to get where it wants to go. Therefore, maturity is not an inevitable result of the first two phases. It is not the end product of a serial process beginning with infancy and moving through adolescence. No, companies like McDonald's, FedEx, and Disney did not end up as mature companies. They started out that way. The people who started them had a totally different perspective about what a business is and why it works. The person who launches his business as a mature company must also go through infancy and adolescence. He simply goes through them in an entirely different way. It's his perspective that makes the difference. The entrepreneurial perspective. I once heard a story about Tom Watson, the founder of IBM. Asked to what he attributed the phenomenal success of IBM, he said to have answered. IBM what it is today for three special reasons. The first reason is that, at the very beginning, I had a very clear picture of what the company would look like when it was finally done. You might say I had a model in my mind of what it would look like when the dream, my vision, was in place. The second reason was that once I had that picture, I then asked myself how a company which looked like that would have to act. I then created a picture of how IBM would act when it was finally done. The third reason IBM has been so successful that once I had a picture of how IBM would look when the dream was in place and how such a company would have to act, I then realized that unless we begin to act that way from the very beginning, we would never get there. In other words, I realized that for IBM to become a great company, it would have to act like a great company long before it ever became one. From the very outset, IBM was fashioned after the template of my vision, and each and every day we attempted to model the company after that template. At the end of each day, we asked ourselves how well we did, discovered the disparity between where we were and where we had committed ourselves to be, and at the start of the following day, set out to make up for the difference. Every day at IBM was a day devoted to business development, not doing business. We didn't do business at IBM, we built one. Now, it's been more than 30 years since Tom Watson spoke about the reasons for IBM's success and I recognize what people might say about this $88.4 billion company. That it's a business in trouble, that it's lost its way that it's hardly an exemplar for any business owner to follow. But if Watson ever alive today, I'm certain it would be different. I'm certain that the entrepreneurial genius that gave rise to IBM would if it were present today. And I don't know that it isn't, but all the signs are there. Be engaged in the reinvention of the company as surely as it had been reinvented time and time again to recreate its future as the future demanded. In short, my storyteller may not have had Watson's words exactly verbatim, but what the story tells us is very important. It reveals an understanding of what makes a great business great. It also tells us what makes all other businesses survivable at their best, intolerable at their worst. It tells us what the very best businesses are fashioned after a model of a business that works. It tells us that it is the entrepreneurial perspective that say it's not the commodity or the work itself that is important. What important is the business, how it looks, how it acts, how it does what it is intended to do. It says that Tom Watson had a passion for the enterprise itself and that unfortunately that most people who go into business don't have a model of a business that works but of work itself, a technician's perspective which differs from the entrepreneurial perspective in the following ways. The entrepreneurial perspective asks the question, how must the business work? The technician perspective asks, what work has to be done? The entrepreneurial perspective sees the business as a system for producing outside result for the customers resulting in profits. The technician's perspective sees the business as a place in which people work to produce inside results for the technician producing income. The entrepreneurial perspective starts with a picture of a well-defined future and then comes back to the present with the intentions of changing it to match the vision. 
The technician's perspective starts with the present and then looks forward to an uncertain future with the hope of keeping it much like the present. The entrepreneurial perspective envisions the business in its entirety, from which is constructed the whole. The entrepreneurial perspective is an integrated vision of the world. The technician's perspective is a fragmented vision of the world. To the entrepreneur, the present-day world is modeled after his vision. To the technician, the future is modeled after the present-day world. Is it any wonder that the entrepreneurial perspective is absolutely necessary for the creation of a great business while the technician produces its exact opposite? The entrepreneurial perspective adopts a wider, more expensive scale. It views the business as a network of seamlessly integrated components, each contributing to some larger pattern that comes together in a way as to produce a specifically planned result, a systematic way of doing business. Each step in the development of such a business is measurable, if not quantitatively, at least qualitatively. There's a standard for the business, a form, a way of being that can be translated into things today that best exemplify it. The business operates according to articulated rules and principles. It has a clear, recognizable form. With the technician's perspective, however, the scale is narrower, more inhibited, confined principally to the work being done. As a result, the technician's business becomes increasingly oppressive, less exhilarating, closed off from the larger world outside. His business is reduced to steps that fail to take him anywhere other than to the next step, itself nothing more than a replica of the one before it. Routine becomes the order of the day. Work is done for work's sake alone, forsaking any higher purpose, any meaning for what needs to be done other than the need to just do it. The technician sees no connection between where his business is going and where it is now. Lacking the grander scale and visionary guidance manifest in the entrepreneurial model, the technician is left to construct a model each step of the way. But the only model from which to construct it is the model of past experience, the model of work, exactly the opposite of what he needs if the business is to free him or the work he's grown accustomed to doing. The Entrepreneurial Model What does the entrepreneur see off in the distance that the technician finds so difficult to see? What exactly is the entrepreneurial model? It's a model of a business that fulfills the perceived needs of a specific segment of customer in an innovative way. The entrepreneurial model looks at a business as if it were a product sitting on a shelf and competing for the customer's attention against a whole shelf of competing products or businesses. Said another way, the entrepreneurial model has less to do with what's done in a business and more to do with how it's done. The commodity isn't what's important, the way it's delivered is. When the entrepreneur creates the model, he surveys the world and asks, where is the opportunity? Having identified it, he then goes back to the drawing board and constructs a solution to the frustration he finds among a certain group of customers. A solution in the form of a business that looks and acts in a very specific way. The way the customer needs it to look and act, not the entrepreneur. How will my business look to the customer? The entrepreneur asks, how will my business stand out from all the rest? Thus, the entrepreneurial model does not start with a picture of business to be created out of the customer for whom the business is to be created. It understands that without a clear picture of that customer, no business can succeed. The technician, on the other hand, looks inwardly to define his skills and only looks outwardly afterward to ask how can I sell them. The resulting business almost inevitably focuses on the thing it sells rather than the way the business goes about it or the customer to whom it is to be sold. Such a business is designed to satisfy the technician who created it, not the customer. To the entrepreneur, the business is the product. To the technician, the product is what he delivers to the customer. To the technician, the customer is always a problem because a customer never seems to want what the technician has to offer at the price at which he offers it. To the entrepreneur, however, the customer is always an opportunity because the entrepreneur knows that within the customer is a continuing parade of changing wants begging to be satisfied.
All the entrepreneur has to do is find out what those wants are and what they will be in the future. As a result, the world is a continuing surprise, a treasure hunt to the entrepreneur. To the technician, however, the world is a place that never seems to let him do what he wants to do. It rarely applauds his effort, it rarely appreciates his work, it rarely, if ever, appreciates him. To the technician, the world always wants something he doesn't know how to give it. The question then becomes, how can we introduce the entrepreneurial model to the technician in such a way that he can understand it and utilize it? The answer is, unfortunately, we can't. The technician isn't interested. The technician has other things to do. If we are to be successful at this, what we must do instead is to give the undeveloped entrepreneur in each of us the information he needs to grow beyond the limitation of the technician's comfort zone so as to experience a vision of a business that works. What we must do instead is to provide our inner entrepreneur with the model of a business that works, a model that is so exciting that it stimulates our entrepreneurial personality, our innovative side, to break free of the technician's bonds once and for all. What we must do instead is discover a model that sparks the entrepreneurial imagination in each of us with such a resounding shock that by the time the technician wakes up to the fact it will be too late. The entrepreneur will be well on his way. But at the same time, if the model is to work, if the model is to awaken the entrepreneur within each of us to begin to rebuild our businesses around the entrepreneurial perspective, they so desperately need to flourish. The manager and the technician need their own models. Because if the entrepreneur drives the business, the manager must make certain it has the necessary fuel for sustenance and that the engine and chassis are in a good state of repair. If the technician is to be satisfied, on the other hand, there must be a model that provides him with work that satisfies his need for direct interaction with every nut and bolt. In short, for this business model of ours to work, it must be balanced and inclusive so that the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician all find their natural place within it, so that they all find the right work to do. To find such a model, let us examine a revolutionary development that has transformed American small business in an astonishing way. I call it the turnkey revolution. It was time for Sarah to open her store, and we still had a lot of work to do. I'll come back tonight, I said. Can I answer any questions before I leave? Yes, Sarah smiled. How soon can we get started?